up everybody great to be with you again today but listen before i get into the message next sunday next sunday tell somebody next to you next sunday we are going fully live online so i'm excited about that you need to join up with one of our home churches if you are not at one yet it's going to be amazing also at the end of this month we have e-groups starting up again we've got forged for you if you want to grow in your walk with christ we have so much that is going on and starting this month i am excited about all that's going to happen and we're going to also next sunday jump into a brand new series uh, called unknown and we're going to be talking about people in scripture who were relatively unknown but had huge impact you don't have to be famous in order for god to use you mightily and so we're going to be talking about that next week it's going to be a great week all right so i i was in the in the word this week and um um i, well, I was in the word every day right and uh and and one day as, as i was in scripture in the book of acts chapter 19 there was just something that that god spoke to my heart that that i wanted to share with you today because i i, I feel like there are so many believers right now that are not realizing and there's no shame in this, there's no guilt in this, but not realizing the greatness of who God is, of, of what he is able to do, of how amazing and how huge and how incredible God truly is. And so I want to talk about that today. I believe God's got something that he wants to say to each and every one of you. And so um, I'm in the book of Acts chapter 19, and um, it, starting in verse 23, there's a story of something that happens with Paul. But the focus uh, of this story right now and for this message is not Paul. But either way, Paul had been preaching and um, he had been doing what God had called him to do. And people were coming to Jesus. They were meeting Jesus. It was incredible. There were amazing things happening. And, and then it says this again in verse 23 of Acts chapter 19. It says, about that time, serious trouble developed in Ephesus concerning the way. It began with Demetrius, a silversmith, who had a large business manufacturing silver shrines of the Greek goddess Artemis. He kept many craftsmen busy. Or in other words, this guy had a great business making a whole bunch of idols, essentially, is what he would do. And, um, and, and he was able to pay a whole lot of other people to work because his business was going really well. And then it says in verse 25, the following, he called them together along with others employed in similar trades and addressed them as follows. And so right now he's getting everybody together because there's something going on. Or in other words, they're losing business because people we're meeting Jesus, right? People were having their lives transformed, their eternities with God established. And this guy was losing money because he would make idols for their God, Artemis. And here's what he says. He says, gentlemen, you know that our wealth comes from this business. But as you have seen and heard, this man, Paul, has persuaded many people that handmade gods aren't really gods at all handmade gods aren't really gods at all before i even go any further you know in, in those days in that time that they had these idols right these physical idols that they would make in order to honor and and to worship and all of a sudden paul comes in saying no like gods made by hand they're, they're nothing that they're, they're something that you made that those absolutely are not anything they have no power they have no life they have no authority and it reminds me right now of how many people live their lives with handmade idols oh i'm not talking about physical idols that you craft and you put up in your house or something like that but we make idols of so many things we we attribute life we attribute power we attribute God attributes to things on this earth that do not carry any power and that do not have any life. 
We do it. We can do it with money. We can do it even with our relationships. We can do it with the house we live in. We can do it with success. We can do it with any number of things where we attribute things that only belong to God, that only God can do. And we attribute those things to other things of life. And those turn into idols for us, whether they're physical or not. And so this man says, Paul has persuaded many people that handmade gods aren't really gods at all. And my friends, gods of any creation from us or by us, whether you're a Christian or not that is watching, are not really any god at all. They have no power to hold us. They have no power to, to bless us. They have no power to do anything stable and solid in our lives. This man continued, and he's done this not only here in Ephesus, talking about Paul, but throughout the entire province. I mean, this man, Paul, is going and convincing a whole lot of people that they don't need these idols, that they don't need this man-made God. Man, in verse 27, he goes, of course, I'm not just talking about the loss of public respect for a business. I'm also concerned, right? Well, watch this. I'm also concerned that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will lose its influence. And that Artemis, this magnificent goddess worshipped throughout the province of Asia and all around the world, will be robbed of her great prestige. I want to focus on two things that, that this man says about their god Artemis. He is worried that their god would lose its influence and also worried that their god would be robbed of her great prestige. And so, in other words, that she would no longer be honored as the god that, that, that he wanted to honor and that she would have no impact in the lives of people. And this man was, was, was scared about that. And I, I, I found this passage to be so amazing and so interesting to me. Because here's a man that is watching Paul as Paul removes people from the clutches of sin and death and idol worship. And he removes them so they would honor the one living God and, and he's worried, of course, for his business, but not only for his business, he's not even worried for the people. He's worried about his goddess, that his goddess would no longer have the honor that she had before, and that his goddess would no longer have the impact that she had before. Or in other words, what this man is saying is that his God, or his goddess in this case, her influence, her impact, all of her honor was weaker than Paul's influence. That this great big God that, that he believed in, that, that, that was so powerful and so amazing and so incredible, that, that there's a single guy named Paul who, who apparently seems to be so strong and so powerful and so amazing that he can remove people from honoring this God. In other words, what this man is admitting to without even realizing it is he worships a weak God. He worships a weak God, a God that has no power, a God that has no respect except for the respect that people choose to give to it. Could you imagine having a God like that? You see, when we worship other things in this world, we are essentially worshiping gods that have no power to impact our lives, and they have no honor except for the power and the honor that we give to it. You see, money in itself has no power, except for the power that I give to it. My job has, has no power except for the power that I give to it, meaning it derives its power from me, not from just existing as an item. And, and in fact, this man who made these gods, these physical idols, he, 
He, he didn't get it because even these physical idols were made by the power of human hands. And so he, he, he was admitting to the reality that their goddess only got its power from other humans. That if the humans started not worshiping the idols, then all of a sudden that, that God was essentially up a creek and it had no power, it had nothing that it could do, and, and it was not honored. How amazing is it that we believe in a God who does not need us to worship him in order for him to be honored? How amazing is it that we believe in a God who doesn't need us to follow him in order for him to be powerful. Does God want you to worship him? Does God want you to honor him? Does God want you to follow him? Absolutely, because he is worthy. But nothing you do or I do will remove the greatness of who God is. And this, my friends, is the difference between everything in this world and the God that we believe in. Because there is nothing that can remove or rob the prestige of our great God. He is an honored God, whether he is worshipped by you or not. He is an amazing God, whether he is worshipped by me or not. He is a God of all power, whether I choose to follow him or not. Nothing I do or don't do changes who God is. In every other God in this world, its power, its prestige, its honor, all comes from what we give to it. And so in this season, I'm thinking about this and how often we give power to powerless things. Let me repeat that for you. How often do we give power to powerless things? Maybe there's a pain in your life that you are giving power to, even though it in and of itself is powerless. Maybe there's a sin in your life that you are giving authority to, even though that sin is nothing. It was crucified with Christ on the cross and has no power except for the power that we give to it. Maybe there's a person in your life that is causing you problems and they have no power except for the power that you give. But my friends, our God, oh, he is all powerful no matter what anybody does. He is worthy of all honor no matter whether people honor him or not. And so my message to you today is would you analyze yourself and ask yourself this question, Am I giving power or honor, respect or obedience to anything in my life outside of God? Because there is nothing in our lives that deserves power, respect, honor or obedience except for God himself. And he is worthy of it mainly because he does not need us for him to have those things. He already has them. If a God requires me giving it power to be powerful, then that is not a God at all. But God does not need my power in order to be powerful because he is a sovereign God. And that, my friends, is worthy of being honored and respected because he does not depend on me. I depend on him. And you know, there's a lot of verses that I could use in scripture that I could go through to talk about how great God really is and everything that he does. But something that's been in my heart recently over the last season has been a chapter found in Psalms. And this chapter is, is a great chapter, Psalm chapter 91. And so if you have a Bible with you, why don't you go there? Psalm chapter 91. And it's a great an incredible chapter and one that I believe is so important in this season of COVID, in this season of elections, in this season of people that don't have work, in this season where it seems like everything has been upended. I want you to make a choice and a decision that you will believe in a God that carries all power. 
and that there is nothing, not a thing on this earth that can stop God from being who he is and doing what he wants to do. This man that made idols, he believed that his God would lose power, would lose prestige, would lose impact as people went away from worshiping that God. Because Paul was leading people to a God that did not need our worship in order to be worthy. He did not need our obedience in order to show himself powerful. But he invites our worship and our obedience because of who he is. And as I read through this psalm, Psalm 91, I'm not going to stop a lot in it, but I'm going to read the whole psalm. I, I, I want you together with me, to believe that you have a God that does the impossible. I have seen so many people in this season give power to fear and give power to apathy and give power to, to lack of resources and to give power to even politicians and to give power to a whole lot of things that don't need our power, don't deserve our power, and they're not worthy of anything we have to give to them. But God is. Here is what God can do. Psalm chapter 91. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness called COVID. Don't be afraid of it. Don't dread it, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Do you believe that? And actually, I should rephrase that. Are you living that right now? Are you living a life of resting in the shadow of the all-powerful, almighty God? Are you living a life giving power to things that don't deserve it, that don't come from God? What are you giving power to? What are you giving authority to in your life? What are you worried about right now? Because that what you are worried about is that what you have given power to in your life. Would you rest in the shadow of almighty God and trust and believe that he is your protection, that he is your life, that he is your strength? Verse number eight, just open your eyes. Open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, notice the word if. If you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. My question to you, is the Lord your shelter? Is the Lord your refuge? I admire people in our church that have decided to step out in faith and do ministry like never before and to impact people's lives and touch people's lives in this season, to live a life not afraid of sickness, not afraid of what's going on in the world, but to step out in faith because they know that God is their shelter that God is their refuge. Verse 11. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. 
They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. God does not need your obedience, but you need your obedience to Christ because of what he will give to you. God does not need your honor, but as you honor him, he is faithful in your life. God does not need your trust, but as you trust him, he will envelop you with his angels and his protection because God does not receive power from you, but you receive power from him. God does not receive honor from from you for him to be more honorable because he is already as honored as he can possibly be. The angels in heaven are worshiping him day in and day out. And even if we don't honor him, as Jesus said, the rocks would cry out in honor to our God because he is worthy no matter what we do or don't. But my friends, when you choose to trust him, when you choose to rest in him, when you choose for him to be your shelter, when you choose to obey him, when you choose to follow him, he will do what no other God on this earth can do. He will do what money can't do. He will do what a job can't do. He will do what doctors can't do. He will do what nobody else and nothing else can do. Will you choose to trust him today? Will you follow the God of Paul or a guy who made a whole bunch of idols admitting to the fact that the power of his God was dependent on the honor that humans gave to it. If that's the reality, that is no God at all. I choose Jesus Christ. I choose the Father, the Holy Spirit, the God of all power, the God of all wonder, the God of all authority, the God of all honor, the God who is worthy, no matter what I do or don't do, doesn't change who he is. And for that, he is a God who is worthy of all that I have to give to him. Let's pray. Jesus, we are so grateful and thankful to you for your goodness in our lives. We're thankful to you for being the God that came and gave your life on the cross for us and rose from the dead, proving your power over death. And so God, we want to give all of ourselves to you for you are worthy and there is no one like you. We thank you and we praise you, Jesus, for who you are and for all that you do. And for every person right now, Lord, who needs to say yes to you, may this be the moment. May they say yes to you and leave everything else behind as they say, God, you are my God. I want you and only you. Would you bless them as they make a decision to follow you? And would you cause for them be to, to be transformed into a new creation in Jesus' mighty name? Amen and amen. If you've said yes to Jesus, shoot us an email to info at citylifela.org. We would love to follow up with you and help you as you want to walk with Jesus Christ. Also shoot us an email if you want to join one of our house churches. We got a whole bunch spread around LA and outside of LA as well. And we would love for you to join one. And outside of that, we're going to jump into some more worship right now. So right where you are, stand to your feet. Come on, do it. Stand to your feet and let's worship God together.